This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create uh, this retro style text using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. And before we get started with this tutorial you'll need to download a specific font called Montserrat Ultra Bold and I will have a link to that in the description of the video. So if, you want, if you'd like to follow along with what I'm doing here in this tutorial make sure to download and install that font before you open up Inkscape. If you, if you install it while Inkscape is opened, it won't register. You'll have to close out of it and restart. Okay, so once we've done that, we'll get started here in Inkscape. Uh, by the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons, a link to that information will be in the description of the video. So the first thing we want to do is make sure the view is set to custom, and then we'll zoom in at one to one. And then we'll open up the Align and Distribute menu with this button up here. And we're gonna want Last Selected chosen from that dropdown. And then we'll open up the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button there. So the first thing we're going to do is create our text. And I, what I find uh, easiest to do is just to create this one letter at a time. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to use the letter A, and then you could take what you've learned from this video and use it to apply it to any other series of letters or numbers that you'd like. So I'll grab the uh, text tool over here, or you can press F8 on the keyboard as a shortcut click on the canvas to get the cursor blinking and I'm just gonna write a capital A. And I'll come up here to the text editor, this T icon, and I'm gonna find that font called Montserrat. I'm actually just gonna click on any, any one of these fonts and then start spelling out. I'm gonna write M-O-N-S, oh wait, M-O-N-T-S, M-O-N-T. There we go, right here. Montserrat and the style we want uh, ultra bold. You click OK, close out of that, grab the select tool, and I'm going to hold Control and Shift in the keyboard and scale this thing up so it's about that big. And I'm going to change this from a text object to a, a path by going to uh, Path, Object to Path, and then click on the Ungroup button right there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this. Uh, green, bring the opacity of this down in half, then I'll right click that and go to duplicate, and I'll make that red, and I'm going to lower that one selection, I'm going to lower it one step so it goes beneath the green selection, and I'm going to give it a red outline by holding shift and clicking on the color red, and that's going to put a faint red outline around the outside of it, you can't really see it but it's there, we're going to make it thicker by going to the stroke style tab, and changing the width to, I'm going to say 20, we'll try 20. Um, maybe a little, maybe 23. That's pretty good right there. I'll leave it like that. And then once we've done that, I'll finalize that by going to path, stroke to path, and then path, break apart. And what I want to do now is zoom in over this selection. I'm going to press plus on the keyboard a couple of times to zoom in. And I'm going to hold shift and click on this outer red piece right here to deselect that. And then I'll hold shift and click on this innermost red piece right here to deselect that. And whatever is left selected, just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. So we're just left with this large red piece and this little red piece in there. And once we've done that, I'll click on that little, uh, little red piece and hold shift and click on the larger one and go to path, difference. And I'll press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. And what I want to do now is duplicate that. So what I'll do is I'll just press delete, uh, uh, not delete, I'll press control D on the keyboard to duplicate that. And I'm going to turn that blue. And I'm going to give this one a blue outline by holding shift and clicking on the color blue. And then I'll send that to the bottom, uh, lower selection to the bottom with that button there. And by default, it should have made it a 23 point stroke. If not, just change it to 23 or whatever the value was you used previously for this red one. And again, we'll go to path, stroke to path, path break apart, and then path union. Okay, so we have the outline of the design done. What we have to create now is kind of like the 3D, uh, kind of like the uh, the beveled effect, not really a bevel, just whatever, uh, whatever you'd like to call that, like that 3D drop shadow there. To do that, I'm gonna click and drag over the entire design, uh, and click on it again to get these rotation handles, and I'm just gonna hold control on the keyboard and grab this top right arrow, and rotate this clockwise four steps. So while holding control, I'll go one, two, three, oops, three, four. 
four steps like that. Click off of that to deselect everything, and then click on just the blue object. And I'm going to delete that by uh, not delete, duplicate that by hitting Control D, and then just hold Control on the keyboard and click and drag this down. I'd say about that far. That's pretty good there. And then we could lower that to the bottom as well. And what we want to do now is close up these corners here, these gaps between these corners. We want to close them, fill them in. So to do that, we'll grab the bezier pen, which is over here, or you can just press B on the keyboard to grab that. And I'm going to turn on the snap to cusp nodes, which is this icon up here. Snap to cusp nodes. And I'm just going to snap the uh, cursor onto this corner and click, snap it onto that corner and click, and then bring it through this object here and click, and then through here, click back to the starting point. It doesn't matter where you bring that line within the object, just as long as it's within the object. And I'll do this again over here. This corner here, this corner here, bring it through the object and then back to the starting point. And then finally we'll go to these corners over here and do the same thing. So we'll click on that corner, click on that corner, through the graphic, back to the starting point, and then we have our little objects here. So uh, what we'll do now is we'll go back to the select tool and I'm going to hold shift and select all of those little objects we just created. I'm just going to hold shift, click on this one, and then this one here, so we have all three selected. And then hold shift and click on this bigger blue object at the bottom here. And with all four of them selected, go to Path, Union. And what we could do now is click and drag over the entire thing, click on it again to get the rotation handles, and hold control and rotate it counterclockwise four steps. So. Uh, one, two, three, four. So it's sitting upright again. And then we'll click off of that to deselect everything. So what I'll do now is I'll click on this blue object to the outside here, and then hold shift and click on this other blue object here to the right or to the right outside, and unify them together by going to path union. And we could turn off the snap to cusp nodes now. We're done with that. And uh, the next thing I'm going to create are these little, uh, this little line pattern going through um, the letter A. So to do that, I'm going to grab the square and rectangles tool, which is right here, or you can just press F4 on the keyboard. And I'll click and drag and create a great big rectangle going over the graphic there. And I'm going to get rid of that out, get rid of that blue outline. I'm actually going to make this black, and then I'll get rid of that blue outline by holding Shift and clicking on the X. And then we'll go back to the select tool. And I'll hold shift and click on the letter A, center it on the vertical axis, and align the bottom edges. And then click off of that to deselect everything. Now we'll click on just the black rectangle right there. And I'm just going to take this top arrow and pull this down until it's going right above like the arm, the green arm of the letter A like that. That's pretty good. And let's convert that to a path by going to path, object to path. And then I'll right click that and go to duplicate. And I'll hold control and just click and drag this one up to about here. Then I'll take this top arrow and pull that down about that much. About that much, that's pretty good. Then I'll right click that and go to duplicate and hold shift and click on the green letter A and align the top edges with this button here. Align top edges. Click off of that to deselect. I'll just click on just this top one here and take this bottom arrow and just bring that up until this line is really thin. So we're going to make a series of lines going in between here that increase with size. So to do that, we're going to use the interpolate extension. So uh, with that selected, I'm going to hold shift and click on this line right here. So we have them both selected and go to extensions, generate from path, interpolate. And this little menu here should pop up. And you're going to want to have these parameters set right here. Exponent 0, interpolation steps 5, interpolation method 2. Duplicate end paths, no. Interpolate style, yes. Live preview, go ahead, click live preview to see what that looks like. So you can see this kind of like it kind of gets jumbled here. There's too many steps in there. So I'm going to lower this to four. Let's see how that looks. Uh, maybe I'll try three. I'll do three, see how that looks. All right, that's pretty good. And now I'll just, once, once it looks good like that, just go ahead and click apply to finish that. And then close out of that menu. And we're going to get these, these series of new lines in here. And with, let's go in and select those and ungroup them with the ungroup button. And then hold shift and click on the line up top and then the line below them and then the big rectangle at the bottom. 
And we're just gonna make sure that they're all spaced out evenly by coming down to the, the uh, distribute panel and clicking the button that says, make vertical gaps between objects equal. Click on that. We'll unify them all together by going to path, union, and then hold shift and alt and click on the lines right over where the green letter A is. So we have that and the green letter A selected and go to path intersection. And what we could do now is we could click and drag over all of this, bring the opacity all the way up and we can begin coloring this in. So I'll click off of that now to deselect everything. I'm gonna click on just this blue object here and I'm gonna come down here to the color picker. I'm gonna find like a dull shade of like navy blue. I'll, I'll start out with this shade here, 214478. And I'll come over to the fill tab and under the HSL tab, I'm gonna come over to the S row and slide this to the left a little bit, just to dull, to give that, make that a little more dull, just to really fit the uh, vintage uh, retro sort of look. And then uh, I'll click on the letter, the red, the red letter A there. Come down here to the color picker. I'll make that yellow, this shade here. What is this, FFCC00. And I'll come over to the L row and slide that to the right to make that like a really dull, almost like a beige tan, like a beige, almost white kind of color. And then I'll take the green object here and I'll just make this, uh, this shade of red over here, which is C83737. That's pretty good. And if you notice here, I kind of have this at a slant, tilted at a slant. To do that, I'll click and drag over everything. Click on it again to get the rotation handles and hold control and take this top arrow here and slide that to the right one step and then hold control and take this corner arrow and rotate that counterclockwise one step like that and click off of that to deselect everything. So the next step now is to apply the vintage texture over it which is what we're going to do now. So to do that uh, we're going to use a raster image and I will provide a link to that in the description of the video. So go ahead down to the description, find the link to that image and download it and uh, save it somewhere where you can easily access it in your computer. And uh, once we've done that, let's click on this dark letter blue, this dark this dark uh, letter A here. Right click that and go to duplicate and then hold control and move this off to the left. And now click and drag over that entire graphic there, excluding that object and group that together. And what we wanna do now is go to where you have um, the image saved that we're gonna use as the texture I have it here in my folder. I'm just gonna click and drag it into Inkscape. And it's gonna ask me if I wanna embed or link it. I'm just gonna click OK to embed it. And if you're using Mac, you're not gonna be able to do the click and drag function. You just go to um, File and Import if you're using a Mac, and that'll do the same thing. So here's our texture image here. I'm gonna bring the opacity of this down because it's kinda, I'd like to see what's going on beneath it. And I'm just gonna hold Control and Shift and scale this down until it's just a little bigger than the letter A there. And then I'm gonna bring the opacity all the way up. And I'm actually gonna put this over here, over this object. And I'm gonna click and drag over both of those so I have them both selected. And I'll bring the opacity down a little bit just to show you. I have them both selected there by clicking and dragging over both of them. Bring the opacity all the way back up and just make sure it's centered on the vertical and horizontal axis. And then go to Object, mask set and what I'm going to do now is come over to the L row under the HSL tab I'm going to slide that to the left to make that a lot darker like that then I'll come and put this over the letter here I'll just hold shift and click on the letter and just center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis click off of it to deselect everything and now click on just the uh, the mask layer here and if you notice this is kind of um, it's a little too dark so what we could do now is we could take the opacity and bring that down until it looks pretty decent like that. Somewhere around like 46, that looks pretty good. And if you notice, if you'd like to make it look even better, if you notice in the thumbnail, I'll use kind of like a backdrop. We could do the same thing, just apply the texture to the backdrop as well. So I'll do that, I'll show that to you real quick. Grab the uh, squares and rectangles tool and just create a rectangle going over it. Bring the opacity all the way up and come down to the color picker and I'll make this like a really, like a shade of like light blue like that, maybe even lighter. That's pretty good. I'll go to the select tool, lower that to the bottom, hold shift, click on the letter A, center it on the vertical and horizontal axis, click off of it to deselect everything. And I'll click on just this, uh, this light blue rectangle right here and I'll right click that and go to duplicate. And again, coming over to the L row, I'm gonna slide that to the left to make that darker like that. 
And I'll just bring in another copy of our uh, texture here. Just click and drag that into Inkscape. Bring the opacity down so I can see what's beneath that. Hold Control and Shift and scale that down until it's a little bit bigger like that. That's pretty good. Then I'll hold Shift and click on the, uh, the rectangle, center it on the vertical horizontal axis. Bring the opacity all the way up. Go to Object, Mask, Set. Send, lower that to the bottom and then raise it one step. Raise selection one step. And you can bring the opacity of that down a little bit as well, just to uh, just so it isn't so like like a uh, harsh. You just bring it down, makes it look nice. And that's pretty much it. We're done. We have created our retro style text and lettering using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching. Thank you.